Welcome to Gridbusters. Sorry it's been so long since my last video. Today what I want to cover are some of your questions that you've been asking me in the comments and I do apologize I haven't answered a lot of those questions which have been popping up in the comments. Uh, so today what I want to do is go through some of those questions, answer those questions and also explain what I've been doing over the last few months. So I, I, again I apologize for not posting any videos. So uh, after the last video which I posted I just got stuck in to get this barn finished before the winter. And you know, this isn't a home renovation <laughs> channel. I know some of you do like those videos, but the majority of you don't. So I didn't film that stuff. So uh, myself and Jude the Builder, we, we finished off the barn uh, completely, um, including uh, getting all the rendering done, getting all the pointing done, getting doors on all these different um, uh, openings here on the barn. Uh, and getting all the little tiny snagging things finished, the little tiny small things like the guttering and the water management and all of those sort of things just took absolutely forever. And then uh, when we were finished, um, I, was, I just felt a little bit burnt out. You know, over the course of uh, this year, we've done so much, completely renovated this barn, put a new roof on, installed the whole solar system, launched a brand new YouTube channel, plus running my own business as well. I was completely burnt out, so I just stopped everything. Actually, I took like a, like almost a two month vacation. Uh, just didn't really do any work, even in my business. So the first question we have is how many solar panels did we actually end up putting on the roof? Well, right now we have 32 solar panels um, on the roof, on the roof uh, and um, I am planning to put another 16. You can see there's like a, a spot there where we could put some more panels. So we can get about 16 panels. And the, at the moment, these panels generate um, roughly around 10 to 11,000 watts of power. In fact, let's go over to the plant room and uh, we can actually see how much they're actually generating right now. There's a little cloud that's going up over. But the interesting thing is this is mid-October. And I, I, what, I, what we've actually found is even on cloudy days, it's still generating, um, you know, at, at noon on a cloudy day, we're generating about a thousand watts, a kilowatt of power. Um, but right now we're, we're generating, well, let's, let's go and have a look. So I do apologize for the mess in this room, but let's have a look. So you can see outside there, uh, and we are generating just over 10 kilowatts of power. Um, so yeah, so the most we, we tend to generate is 11 kilowatts, but usually the kind of the norm uh, that we find is we're generating around 10 kilowatts of power when the sun is out. So yeah, it, it's, uh, yeah, it's mid-October, but it's really warm in here. Um, and let's just see what the, we've got no heating in here, obviously. We don't need heating. Um, so we're at uh, about 26. 26, something like that. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's around 26, so it's quite warm in here. <laughs> so I don't think we're gonna need any heating in here. If anything, air conditioning, I think we still need to install an air conditioner in here for, for, the, um, for the summer. Uh, obviously I've got my, my window unit here, which I've disconnected now. So the first question is, is everything working as I expected it to? Well, the simple answer to that question is it's actually working much better than I expected. I thought that if it wasn't going to be like a mega sun, sunny day, I thought, you know, if, if there was cl like clouds, we wouldn't get any solar power. But like I said before, you know, even if it's a cloudy day, we can still generate a, a kilowatt of power, sometimes like 1200 watts of power. What we find is if it's like a really rainy, horrible, gloomy day in the morning, early in the morning, we're only generating two or 300 watts of power, so virtually nothing. But then like at lunchtime, we, we, we get to like about a kilowatt of power and then it tails off. And obviously that's not enough uh, for our needs. But uh, on, on, a, on a day like today, in, as an example, this morning, it was uh, really cloudy and raining and gloomy and we had about a kilowatt of power. And then at about 12.30, we, the sun came out and now we've got like 10 kilowatts of power and we're actually charging our batteries. So our batteries were down to like 30%. And now um, this afternoon, I think we're probably gonna get our batteries fully charged again and that will take us through the night. So, uh, and, and obviously in, in the summer, we're, we're, <laughs> we, we've got way too much power. So we, we've kind of like oversized the system now. I am, it's going to be very, very interesting to see what happens over winter. And I'm pretty sure that, we, you know, we're 
100% not going to have enough power for the winter. Um, particularly now we've just started to put some of the electric heat heating on in the house. So we've got electric underfloor heating, which is on pretty much 24 hours a day now in our bathroom. Uh, we do switch it on in our kitchen when it gets a bit cold and upstairs in the office and things like that. We have under, electric underfloor heating, which does use an immensely large <laughs> amount of power. So we did have um, like a week ago, we had an entire week when there was uh, like, you know, it was cloudy every single day. And what, what we do is we go into the settings in the Victron system and program it uh, so that it charges the batteries at nighttime. So between, I think it's like 1 a.m. and 5 a.m., I set it to charge the battery. So it gives the batteries a boost of power during the night and we get our electricity from the grid much cheaper then we have like off-peak uh, electricity so uh, when we do that we can then use that off-peak power during the day which uh, you know we charge our batteries and then we can use that during the day which really does help uh, keep uh, our electricity costs down so that brings us into the other question about you know are we actually do we have an electricity bill and yes we still have a power bill um, so we had, well, let's just have a look. So in August, uh, so we had a, a bill for August and September and that was around 30 euros. So 15 euros a month we're paying, uh, you know, on the, in, in, in the winter, sorry, in, in the summer. Um, and that really is just our standing charge. So, they, you know, the power company here, EDF, they charge us just for like renting the electricity line, I guess, or renting our grid connection. So yeah, we, we, 15 euros a month is what we're paying roughly in the summer. Um, I think in the winter, we're obviously going to be paying a lot more, but it's going to be very interesting comparing uh, our winter electricity costs to our winter electricity costs last year. So Dave, my husband, he's done some spreadsheets and things. So what I want to do is maybe in the next video is go through some of those spreadsheets, but it's going to be really interesting. I think around Christmas time, we can really start having a look at that and comparing what our power costs and actual like our hard costs are compared to last year because you know obviously in December and November and things like this in January there's very little you know we've got much shorter days there's less sun um, and we're using a lot more power and how how does the solar system you know help us in those you know in times like that so uh, it's that's going to be really really interesting to see but like like i said I, I think the whole system really is working much better than i expected so the next question is what would i change if i were like building the system again from scratch the biggest thing i would change is the layout of the system on the board let me just show you so uh, we've got at the moment we've got our charge controllers here and we've also got the inverter um, here. Now, this is a 15 kilowatt inverter. So we've actually got plenty. I don't think we're ever going to need to expand this, this unit. Uh, and I always thought, well, you know, if this isn't enough, we could put another inverter here. Uh, you know, so we do have like a blank space here. And as it turns out, I think we're gonna be installing more solar panels and I think we might need to install another one or two charge controllers. And I'm really angry that, you know, we, I've laid the system out like this. It would have been much better if we'd had a bigger, I wish I'd put this board to here and spaced everything out a little bit. So I wish I'd put this inverter here and had more of a space here. I could fit at least one more charge controller here. I can't put anything above these charge controllers because they are, they do spew out. You can just see at the top there, you can see there's a, you can see the, the air movement um, on the ceiling there. Um, yeah, so it's like an electric fan heater going up. You, you, pu you put your hand there, you can feel the hot air coming out and this is the intake. So I can't really put anything here because it will be blowing hot air straight up into here. So very annoying. Um, so it, if, you know, when, when we do install more charge controllers, maybe I could put a charge controller on the side of this rack, which I don't really, I don't think that's really ideal. Um, I could put a charge controller here. Um, so yeah, I mean, I could maybe put two charge controllers here, but it's, uh, I just wish I had everything grouped together a little bit better.
So the next question is about my batteries. So what I'm actually using is I'm using three 15 kilowatt hour batteries. These are DIY batteries and the case is EEL. And um, I bought the battery cells on Alibaba. And yeah, they have, they are working fantastically well. And so the, the, the question was about balancing. Do I, you know, are, are these batteries staying balanced? Do I need to like every now and again, top balance the batteries? Well, the answer is no, because the BMS I'm using is the surplus BMS, which is known for not having great balancing. However, the workaround for that is I'm using the knee active balancer. These aren't very expensive. These, I can't remember how much this was now. This is like maybe 30, 40 um, dollars, uh, maybe 50 dollars at the most. Anyway, they're not hugely expensive, these balancers. But you hook one of the, so I've got one of these in each um, battery case, as well as the actual active balancer. And I can log on by Bluetooth and look at all the cells and that standalone balancer keeps the cells absolutely perfectly balanced. It does an outstandingly good job. And somebody actually did ask in the comments, why, why don't I just, you know, in the, for my next battery, get a JK BMS? Why, why am I using the surplus? Well, when I originally built the system, the you know original JK BMSs had a lot of issues, a lot of problems. I understand now the JK BMSs are getting better. But at the time, the surplus BMS was the best option for me. And the thing is, when you start with one particular BMS, you, you want to stick with that for all the rest of your batteries. It's, it's, it gets very tricky when you start having like, you know, two batteries with a surplus BMS and another two batteries with, let's say, um, you know, some, you know, a Dali BMS or something else. Uh, the communications, the data like communications between the batteries becomes a real problem and then you start needing converters and it, it all becomes very complicated and difficult. It's much better just to keep everything the same. And at the end of the day, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I have a solution that works incredibly well, so I don't need uh, anything different. So the surplus BMS and the knee active balancer it works very, very well. So I'm very, very happy with that. So yeah, everything is working fine. I think next year we might add another, uh, maybe in January, February, we might add a, a fourth battery to the system taking up to 60 kilowatt hours because we do have sometimes, you know, if we have like a couple of days of sun, uh, we do have a lot of excess energy. And it's quite funny at the moment when we, you know, if, if, when our batteries are like 98% full, uh, we start running around thinking, oh, we need to put the dishwasher on. Let's let's wash all the clothes. Let's get the bed linen off and put the washer through, put the dryer through. And we're thinking of all these different ways which we can use the power. Let, let's you know charge the car to 90% because normally I only charge my car to 60% because it's good for the batteries. So I you know leave my, my Tesla usually charged around 60% for day-to-day -day use. But if we have two or three days of sun, I'm like, oh, let, right, turn the car on. Let's get the car charged up to 90%. Uh, let's charge all the um, garden tool batteries. It's kind of crazy, really. So I think having an extra battery would help us out in those times so we can just store more power for those days when, uh, or like if we have two or three days where it's raining, we can keep that power. And the interesting thing is, is that the battery prices just keep on falling. So that I was checking on Alibaba yesterday and you know the, the battery cells are even cheaper now than the last build, so they, they just keep coming down and down and down and down. Uh, so yeah, I think over time we're just going to carry on adding more and more batteries, particularly as they get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. Um, why wouldn't we? You know, uh, the other thing which we're going to be doing, I'm not quite sure when. I'm hoping to do it this year, but if not, it will probably be January, February. If, as long as we don't have any snow, is adding um, 16 more solar panels to the roof. But first of all, we're going to see how, how, how we do over winter uh, and see if we actually really do need those panels. And then the final thing, which we maybe will do next year or the year after, is I'm thinking about possibly installing a winter only solar array in the back field of the house. Uh, maybe using secondhand solar panels and you can get secondhand solar panels for al almost free <laughs> if you're willing to go to the solar farms and pick them up here in France. So a lot of the solar farms here which have literally thousands of solar panels 
they, you know, when they upgrade to new solar panels, for them it's just like waste which has to be you know, recycled. And if you're willing to go down there and pick them up, you can sometimes get these solar panels for free or maybe like five euros each or, you know, incredibly cheap. But, you know, you've got the hassle factor of actually having to drive maybe a thousand miles to go and collect them, pick them up and knowing that maybe some of them don't work, some of them will work. You know, you've got that kind of gamble. So I might do that. I think it'd be an interesting project to go and pick up a couple of hundred solar panels uh, from a solar farm. And then we can see what we can do with them in the back field. Obviously, there's going to be the expense of wiring them up and the expense and the hassle of actually like bolting them to some sort of rack or something. But I thought maybe it could be something which we just use in the winter when we have those days when uh, like when we're generating only a kilowatt of power. Well, what if we had four times as many panels, then suddenly we're generating four kilowatts of power on a really dull, cloudy day. And then with a little bit of clever programming in the Victron system, we could program a relay to disconnect those solar panels when the sun comes out. So when it's really sunny, those panels disconnect, otherwise would overload the system. Um, and that way we can stick with the same amount of charge controllers maybe. I'm just thinking about different ways of doing it because yes, we could get the panels for free maybe, but I don't wanna have to buy another thousand euro you know charge controller what if we just had a relay which switched those panels in and out when it was sunny or not sunny um, so it's just an array which was used when it was cloudy if that makes sense let me know your thoughts or if you know anyone who's done that i don't know if anyone's done this but i was reading through the victron manual and you can program relays so i don't think uh, that would be a problem. I think you could actually do that. So let me know your thoughts. I've got all sorts of ideas for possibilities. Um, but anyway, I'm going to end the video because it's absolutely boiling in here. It's really hot and I want to get back outside. Um, so uh, yeah, let me know in the comments what you think. Remember to like and subscribe and uh, I'm glad to be back and um, I'll catch you next time.